Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. We're going to kick this video off discussing Ryzen 7000, specifically the Vcash variants. Obviously, AMD had a lot of success with the 5800X 3D. In fact, just for your FYI, as we are now in the Black Friday period, there are a ton of really good deals on Zen 3 across the board. And I've noticed numerous retailers have really done quite an aggressive price cut on the 5800X, as well as the 3D variant. So if you do have an AM4 motherboard and you don't quite fancy jumping onto Zen 4 or one of the newer Intel platforms, it's a pretty good way to go. Anyway, that's not an advertisement or anything, it's just a quick FYI. There is an interesting thread going on on Twitter, as there tends to be, and Hassan over at WCCF Tech has stated that X3D is not just for 6 and 8 cores. Now this is contrary to some rumours that we actually recently covered on the channel. I think it was Amy that mentioned that there were some rumours from China Chinese forums, I believe it was, that it was limited to just six and eight cores, which was actually contrary to some previous rumors that I'd mentioned, and I think a couple of others, that Zen 4 was going to go up to 16 cores for Vcash. Now, I just want to stress that with any of these rumors, even if a variant is being tested in AMD's labs, it may not ever come to market, and there are several reasons that they may not choose to release it. One is pricing. B, it could be that they don't want to put that amount of performance on the market. It could be heat related. Uh, why would they not want to put that amount of performance? I just realized maybe I should kind of uh, quantify that. Well, it could be that they feel it would put them in a bad light against the next generation of processors. They may feel that it's going to eat too much into, let's say, against thread ripper. And we've actually got some thread ripper news. Or it could be a number of other different reasons. It could be heat related, power consumption. But again, I had heard up to 16 cores. And Hassan is basically stating that yep we are going to see higher core counts i personally believe that 12 cores is almost assured and i think that 16 is quite likely as well as you can imagine that performance is going to really differ depending on the different workloads that you're running games for example well what engine what resolution and so on and so on and even things like content creation what content creation is it going to be let's say adobe premiere and so on and so on you can probably get a rough idea by looking at a workload on zen 3 but it's not necessarily exactly the same thing because obviously while intercore latencies from zen 3 to zen 4 i think from memory are roughly about equal there are some other platform latencies like ddr5 as the ddr4 and it's just it's quite a lot different so you can't do a complete apples to apples comparison but it's going to be very interesting to see how Intel counters to this. I suspect we may see even more aggressive pricing from Intel. AMD themselves at the moment are seeming to do some good deals for Zen 4 going in. I'll be very interested to see what the Vcash variants are going to end up costing. I don't think they're going to be cheap. I don't think you're going to be buying this for the price of a pack of gum. But... At the end of the day, these things are just going to be like really vast. They're going to be rapid. They're probably just going to be tearing through most benchmarks. It's going to be really, really, really interesting 12 months in technology for CPUs. And that's not even talking about Zen 5 and God knows what else is coming to the market. Speaking of things which are coming to the market, while I realize not many of you are probably going to be super interested in the Ripper of Threads, I did want to mention Storm Peak. These are Ryzen Thread Ripper 7000 series. I've mentioned on the channel, I think a couple of times now, that Thread Ripper is probably going to be going up to 96 cores. It's quite logical because, because it tends to ape Epic. And that's what we've seen here. So basically, someone has done some testing. I'm um, getting this from videocards.com, although initially it was from Bench Leaks who posted this. So, of course, I will leave a link to all of this in the video description. Now, it's detecting this as 192 threads because ultimately it's basically, uh, well, pretty much putting the SMT threads in with, a, you know, a real core. That's just how the benchmark's running this. Now, of course, it is possible that this is faked. But I don't think this is very likely. I have even heard 128 cores is being considered in the future for Thread Ripper. Um, I don't know if that's Zen 5 though, or whether that's some type of pro variant. It's a little ambiguous because different sources are telling me different things. So I think Thread Ripper is just going to be going just absolutely through the stratosphere in terms of core count. At the end of the day, this is not really something that you're going to need if you're a home user like you know 96 cores but if you are you know doing certain workloads like high resolution video editing you're trying to do like 3d rendering whatever else 
there is a reason, you know. That, yeah, and also you can do some really cool stuff like segmenting cores for different workstation workloads, you know, that kind of thing. It's really cool. I'm going to be curious to see what the price is like on these things. Again, these are going to be like, you know, not high volume parts at the end of the day. So you can probably expect that AMD is going to be charging you what is known as a, as a pretty penny. And speaking of a pretty penny, let's talk about RTX 40, shall we? Uh, some mobile stuff. So I'm going to go over this really briefly. I'm going to kind of delimitate this for two separate pieces of news because I don't want to, I don't want to combine the two and get people confused. So basically, starting out with WCCF tech stuff, what they've basically stated is the RTX 40 mobile. They have some very, very 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 early specifications and they've also got some performance targets i'm not going to read out all of this stuff because quite frankly you guys can see it yourself but for example the 4080 ti is getting and they've also rounded up and down the numbers and they have also recreated the slide um, this is not unusual like sometimes you just get numbers or you get a slide from someone and then you're not you're asked basically not to show the slide um, because it's quite easy sometimes to verify this. And even if, let's say, 20 or 30 or 50 people have that slide, sometimes companies will do sneaky things. Like, they may put, like, a double space in a specific paragraph, or they may color one thing, like, a very subtly different shade of amber, just for example. And so it makes it much easier to kind of figure out who posted what. So, for example, let's just hypothetically say that I'm a company and I have Bob and Jane and I give Bob a variant of a slide and I give Jane a variant of a slide. I may color Jane's slide, you know, just ever so slightly darker shade of green in one specific tiny section versus Bob. And then I'll be like, hey, look, now I can figure out it was Bob that leaked the slide and he is gonna get himself a spanking. Okay, he probably fired. Um, but anyway, so 4080 Ti in these results get 17,300. And if we compare that to the RTX 3080 Ti, well, on average, we're looking at 13,300. So essentially speaking, we're looking at around a 30% performance bump with the RTX 40 mobile. According to WCCF Tech, we're going to see NVIDIA launches at CES. I think I've mentioned this several times over that both NVIDIA and AMD are going to announce stuff at CES. It's not too difficult. You can kind of figure that out anyway you don't really need me to leak that to you although i have mentioned it in leaks it's kind of obvious just looking at uh, nvidia's general timing of stuff um according to wccf tech's information the 4090 is probably going to be or 4080 ti it's a little unclear at the moment on specifications names and i'll probably i'll tell you more about that in a second but it's 16 gigabytes the 4080 is 12 gig gigabytes the 4070 is 8 gigabytes the 4060 is 8 gigabytes and the 4050 is going to be just setting the world ablaze with only six gigabytes. Now, obviously, that's probably going to be enough to power something like a 1080p screen. Anywho, but this brings me down to some interesting stuff that I was told. Now, I have not had time as of the time that I'm telling you guys this to verify this information. So please take it as a, hmm, that's nice, rather than I am relatively confident in this info however a single source uh, a while back actually told me this so the rtx 4080 ti is um, basically going to be running 60 sms but the info i got back then was 12 gigabytes of memory so it's very possible that nvidia are starting to do things when it comes to the amount of sorry in terms of the naming of these gpus the 4070 though i was told eight gigabytes and that's with 36 SMs. So it could go up to 1.7 gigahertz boost, but max Q obviously is gonna be a little differently, a, a little different in terms of clock frequencies. Honestly, NVIDIA just keep changing the specifications, all, uh, sorry, the, the names and specifications of SKUs all of the time. So it's very difficult to pin things down. Um, I've also heard that the 4090 may launch later, but WCCF Tech have a later information than me, so I'd probably give them the nod in terms of the accuracy here rather than myself. And the final thing that I want to discuss really quickly, and this is the RTX 40 sales. So 
this is coming from a couple of sources, including WCCF Tech and Chili Dog. But according to what they have initially found, basically the RTX 4090 shipments are around 130,000 units. I believe these are worldwide, but the 4080 is 30,000. I'm curious, actually, let me know down in the comments below two things. One, if you were trying to purchase a 4090, how quickly did it sell out for you? Um, the FEs just sold out in like, dude, <laughs> <didn't>, like... <laughs> It literally was the point where I saw the card, clicked it, and it was out of stock. So I'm assuming scalping or something or another was going on there. And most other shops, they didn't last long. Um, so I didn't manage to get one on launch. However, I have now procured a 4019. There's going to be a lot of testing and other bits coming on the channel. Um, but as for the 4080... In the UK anyway, I haven't followed the launch as tightly, but it seems like they are still quite prevalent. Um, and this seems to be what a lot of people are noticing. So let me know, B, if you tried to get a 4080 or just in general, what it's like. I'm particularly interested to hear about walk-in stuff. Walk-in stores, I think, are less common in the UK versus like Canada and the US. Like there's a couple of really big stores like Micro Center, I think. Uh, do correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a few other really big stores. So let me know what's going on. Anywho, so what I personally have heard uh, regarding the shipments is that the 4090 in particular had a crap ton of units available like a lot um i heard it was around 90 to 100 thousand i heard it was several times more than the flagships from the previous generation which of course is rtx 30 and then since then nvidia of course have been trying to get more on store shelves and i've even heard that they were somewhat surprised on how quickly the 1490 sold out now i'm not actually too surprised myself because while the cards are expensive there was so much hype for these things and the performance is just so ridiculously good like yeah okay i'm gonna be very hyped for rdna3 i'm not gonna lie to you guys like for a thousand bucks for that amount of performance it's pretty awesome but ultimately there was so much hype going into both of these cards like i think rdna3 is probably going to sell out pretty quickly at those prices as well i don't know what the what the um what the allocation of cards is like i've actually heard very conflicting things one person told me it's about the same as rdna2 launch which doesn't bode too well and another person told me it was pretty decent so my advice to you if you do want an rx 7900 xt or an xtx well you know what to do <laughs> basically just just be ready get like your butt cheeks on the on the chair immediately and just like uh, i mean the really obvious thing is don't try them don't try the, the 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 retailers like amazon you know if you can go to like a mom and pop store especially if you know they'll hold it for you or if you can go to like you know like a smaller online retailer or something especially something in your specific area you may have better luck but Good luck to you, basically, with any next-generation product launch, and that's CPUs or GPUs or consoles or pretty much anything at the stage. So it's going to be very interesting what AMD um, what AMD uh, means for NVIDIA going forward, because basically speaking, as I'm sure most of you know, the RTX 4080 is kind of expensive. I haven't got one. I haven't tested one out. I haven't really pushed for a review sample, to be honest, of the 4080. I got kind of asked by one AIB, but I wanted to wait until I kind of had opportunity to test out the 4090 so i kind of just said eh, i'll wait on that for a little bit um but i have to say that you know it looks a great card the 4080 it's just too expensive um i'm going to be extremely interested to see what happens from nvidia's perspective going forward ultimately as many of you probably know it's all about the pricing of the 30 series and that's why they position the 4080 so so high but yeah, I mean, the 30 series just can't withstand this assault much longer because RDNA 3 is just going to kick it in the nuts. Um, like, why the balls would you pick up, let's say, an RTX 3080 or a 3080 or a 14... Uh, wow, my brain is just, like, confusing all of these numbers now. The RTX 3080 or the TI or the 3090 or any of these cards when, you know, you can get RDNA 3. Even if you're paying an extra couple of hundred bucks, like... The performance difference is so massive you just you just may as well right so it's going to be very interesting to see if nvidia do a price cut i honestly don't know i i don't think they will at this stage but i would love to be proven wrong obviously the 4070 
12 gigabyte launches at CES-ish. Obviously, NVIDIA themselves have already kind of confirmed that the 4070 12 gigabyte event is coming soon. So, yeah, with all of that said, guys, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.